All right, good evening everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. This is James Olfer here with you, and we are glad that you're with us for another study for God's Word. Today we're going to be discussing uh, a healthy diet, you might say. Well, not really so much a healthy diet, but we're going to be discussing uh, what is necessary for a healthy diet. You know, the, the USDA recommends a certain dosage of uh, fruits and vegetables and uh, various and sundry uh, healthy foods. Well, today we're going to be just giving you some milk and some meat, you might say. As Peter said in 1 Peter 2 and verse 3, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And then Paul said in uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 5 and verse uh, 12 through 14, he said, uh, strong meat belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So hopefully we're going to be giving you some milk and some meat today. But the real uh, issue we're going to be dis discussing is not so much milk and meat as it is fruit. You know, you need some fruit, fruits and veggies. But we're going to give you some fruit today. Uh, and we're going to discuss what it takes to uh, make sure you're getting good fruit. We're going to do some fruit inspecting today. You might say that... Um, uh, we're the USDA when it comes to the religious world, uh, and so that's what we're doing. We're we're the USDA and going to give you some fruit inspection that's coming up right here on a word from the Lord. So stay tuned for that. Friends, uh, a word from the Lord is brought to you by the Church of Christ that meets at 250 Boulevard in Eden, North Carolina. We meet Sundays at 9 a.m. for uh, Bible study, 10 a.m. for worship. Sunday... Uh, nights, of course, right here at 5 p.m., uh, coming to you uh, live. But on Thursday nights, then we have a uh, Bible study at 7 p.m. there at the Boulevard, and uh, hope that you will come out and and uh, study God's Word with us. Uh, anytime you have a chance, we'll be glad to hear from you, see you, visit you, with you, meet you, and get to know you. And so some of you I know uh, are listening and watching. You've, you've um, uh, been um, paying attention to what the Church of Christ has been teaching for for years, and uh, you know, now's a good time to come out and visit and examine. You've been sitting there uh, away, kind of secluded and to yourself uh, all these years, but you like and appreciate what you're hearing. So, we hope that you will come out and visit with us. Uh, you know, you you'll be uh, an honored guest, and you'll be among friends there. So if you'd like to come out and visit with us, 250 Boulevard on Sundays at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and Thursdays at 7 uh, p.m. And of course, you can reach me at a word from the Lord at gmail.com, a word from the Lord at gmail.com, a word from the Lord at gmail.com. That's my email address, or 276 340 2653. 276 340 2653. That's my phone number. You can call me right now if you want to. And, um, We'll, we'll have a discussion right here on the air. That's my cell phone number. Now, if you want to call into the into the studio, this is a live call-in program. Um, the area code is 336. Uh, area code is 336. The phone number is 427-9696. That's 427-9696. 427-WMYM or 627-9563. That's 627-WLOE. And uh, we'll take your calls right here on the air, and we'll give you a, a uh, have some Bible discussion back and forth. Uh, be glad to discuss it, anything that we'll be talking about. So uh, if you have a question, give us a call. But uh, let's get back to the fruit inspecting. That's what we're going to be discussing today, fruit inspectors. Uh, as I said, we're kind of the USDA when it comes to uh, fruit inspections. You know, uh, you have to have, the government has certain criteria that... Uh, they put on foods in order to consider them healthy or safe. And the USDA is the uh, association that does that. Well, we're not the United States Department of Agriculture. That's what the, the uh, agency that supposedly checks our food and tells us it's safe to eat or not. But we are the USDA of uh, when it comes to the Bible, Bible matters. Uh, you might say that's the uncovering, saving doctrines once again. That's what we're doing. Uh, I was trying to think about some acronyms there. How about unveiling scriptures that denominations are against? I kind of like that one better. The USDA, uh, unveiling scriptures denominations are against. Well, friends, when it comes to the Bible, we have to unveil some things or expose some things that probably 
and you've never heard, and maybe you've never heard, or that you've heard are wrong. But you know, there's a lot of myths going around about foods too. Uh, one time you'll hear the USDA say it's bad to eat butter. Then the next time you say, well, it's good because it's you know it's a uh, butter's good for you. It's a natural food. It's not processed and 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 so forth. Or one time they'll tell you, you know, don't eat red meat, then they'll tell you eat red meat, then they'll tell you, well, eat in moderation, they'll tell you stay off protein, then they'll say eat protein, uh, eat fiber, don't eat fiber. Uh, so so you really can't tell with, with the government USD, but with when it, with it comes to the Church of Christ, the USDA, we're going to be unveiling scriptures that are going to help you save your soul, and uh, that's what we're doing. And a lot of times there's individuals that are against those things because it's contrary to what they believe. It's contrary to what they they would teach or have you believe, and so they want to fight against that. Uh, that's the same reason why, uh, getting back to the food industry, you know, the food industry is get against certain things because it hurts their bottom line. It hurt, hurts their 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 dollar. Um, you know, the the sugar industry didn't like it or doesn't like it when all the um, the soft drinks started going to corn syrup. Well, I wonder why. Well, because it cut into what they were doing. So the you know one industry is going to be against the other. Well, what we're talking about is is truth. We're not talking about what it comes to taste or what's better for you health wise physically. We're talking about your spiritual health, and so we're talking about scriptures that can actually help save your soul. So unveiling scriptural scriptures denominations are against. That's the that's the USDA. That is the Church of Christ. Now, friends, let's talk about fruit inspecting for a minute. There, you know if. Uh, if you ask someone about a, a particular verse in the Bible, I said there's certain verses in the Bible that are just, uh, I think most people just, you know, they 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 know by heart. They've heard it so many times that these verses just come, you know, naturally to them. And they can uh, spout them off to you lickety-split. And probably one of those is Matthew 7, verse 1, judge not that you be not judged. But in that same context, if you continue reading, and this is really, friends, uh, this is where... A lot of people, why they get confused on understanding the Bible is because they don't look at the context of the one verse that they that they know. But in Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14, listen to what Jesus says. Now, we're talking about just, what, 12 verses later from the don't judge verses, but listen to what he says. He says, enter ye in at the straight gate. This is Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now, let's stop and ask some questions. That's, that's always important when you're trying to understand the scriptures. Let's stop and ask some questions here. What is a reason a person might go the wrong way? I mean, what, what, what would cause someone to enter into that, that broad uh, way that leadeth unto destruction. I mean, what would cause someone to get on that road? Uh, just, just think about it. They took a wrong turn somewhere. Could it be that maybe, just perhaps, now you might say, well, they chose to go that way. Well, that's true. That's true. Um, um, my wife and I watched a program the other day. It's on about border patrols, and it's amazing how many people they take the wrong road, like going into Canada, and they take the wrong road uh, across the bridge, and they wind up on the border, and they have to, they want to turn around. But when they turn around, the uh, the border patrol, you know, gets to check out their vehicle, and they find things that they normally wouldn't find that, that people normally wouldn't have in their cars um, because they don't intend to go to the border, across, you know, in, uh, enter into another country. But nonetheless, they made a wrong turn, and and so we're always amazed how many people just take these wrong turns. Well, what makes what would make someone make a wrong turn spiritually and get on the broad way that leads to destruction? I mean, what what, what could that be? Well, do you think maybe someone might be giving them wrong directions? I mean, is that a possibility? I say it is. It's a great possibility that one reason why people take the wrong turns is because they they're given wrong directions. Now, look at the very next verse. Matthew 7 and verse 15, Jesus says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So here's, I mean, do you see the connection here? Jesus says, don't enter into the broad way. 
enter into the straight and narrow way. Few are going to find the straight and narrow way. Many people will go into the broad way that leads to destruction, and they'll enter in thereat. And then the very next verse, he says, beware of false prophets. Well, let's put two and two together. False prophets are one of the reasons why so many people are going down the broad way that leads to destruction. And so here, here's the danger. The danger is being led down the broad way, and so it's going to depend on someone giving directions that will direct them that way. And so Jesus says, you need to watch out for who's giving you bad directions. False teachers. Beware of false prophets. And so it's, it's, um, it's, it's important that we know who a false prophet is or what, what they do, what they teach, so that we can examine them. Now listen, in Matthew 16, verse uh, uh, 6, Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now, he's talking to his disciples, his apostles, and he says, take heed of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And, of course, they thought he was talking about bread. But then in verses 11 and 12, he explains. He says, how is it that you do not understand that I spake it uh, not to you concerning bread, but that you should beware of the leavening of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Then understood they how he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And so Jesus says you need to watch out for false teachers. You need to watch out for people that are teaching false doctrine. Now, that gets us back to this question, how are we going to know then who's teaching right and who's teaching wrong? We have to, we have to determine, make a judgment somewhere that someone is right and someone's wrong. And so what Jesus said in Matthew 7 verse 1, judge not that you be not judged, is certainly not telling us don't judge what people teach. Uh, because then he later goes on and says, beware of false prophets. You know, they come into you in, in, uh, as sheep's clothing, uh, but inwardly they're ravening wolves. Now listen, in John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1, John, 1 John 4 verse 1, John said, Beloved, be, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. So, these false teachers, they may look okay, they may look nice and pretty on the outside, but the danger is what's on the inside. So if you're going to, uh, if, if you're going to be determining what's good and what's bad, what's pure and impure, what's, what's good for you, let's say what's good food and what's not good food, then you have to be careful about what you pick up. Uh, you know, I don't know how many times uh, I've gone to the store, we've bought some fruit and vegetables, whatever, and you get home, it's like, man, they're, they're bad. Uh, you go to the store and you pick up some apples and they're nice and pretty and you get home and they got bruises all over them. You know, they're brown on the inside where they've been bruised or bananas or something like that. You know, well, what does it look like on the outside? They look good on the outside, but, you know, they're bruised or they're mushed or worms or something in, on the inside. So you have to be careful because you can't always just look on the outside. You have to judge righteous judgment, John seven twenty four. Judge not by appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So that's that's why you have to be careful about uh, these false teachers. But how do you know? How, how do you know who's teaching you false doctrine and who's not? Well, they have disguises. So you have to be able to see through the disguise. You have to inspect them carefully. Uh, Paul said in Second Timothy. Four, uh, verses 3 and 4. He said, The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. Now, how are you going to know which one of these teachers is, is teaching false doctrine? Well, they're wearing a disguise, right? Well, what is their disguise? I mean, think about it. What's the disguise of a false teacher? I submit to you that one uh, disguise of a false teacher is they, they talk about things that you want to hear, things that you need to hear about, but they don't tell you the other things. Like, for example, they'll probably tell you, they'll talk about the love of God. They'll talk about Jesus. They'll talk about the cross and mercy and grace and hope and peace and all that, that's, those are all good. But they won't tell you the things that are most essential to your salvation. They'll leave out some things. Or they'll twist those things. And so you have to be very, very careful. And the only way to do that 
only way to do that is to is to be a very very good inspector about these false teachers to find out if they're really going to lead you down the the straight and narrow or are they really leading you down the, the broad with these destruction so the problem is uh, they do not have a straight gate or a narrow way in their teaching see they, they will have nothing that will cause men to think you know what I, I need to change see the false teachers if you just if you just look at them you say oh they, they, they sound good they look good they look good on TV they sound pretty you know they they got a good smile and, and so forth and they talk about Jesus and they talk about love and things like that but are they telling people anything that would give them a reason to change I mean, when you hear people talking about well it's okay to to drink and dance and that's what they're having in their churches they're having proms and they're uh, serving their alcohol which we discussed uh, a couple weeks ago when you talk about individuals that are are becoming more like the world you know they've got their concerts and their smoke machines and coffee shops and bars and grills and everything else inside their their church buildings that would that will draw people you know they're serving their hot dogs and their ice cream there's a uh, church in in Eden driving down the hill there they want me to announce it for them but uh, so I won't but you know they're serving hot dogs well what are they telling you they're telling you this is what we want this is how we're going to appeal to you so it may look good and sound good but the thing is they're not really offering you anything that's going to tell you to change you know you can come as you are and stay as you are but listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 16 verse 24 Jesus said unto his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me so the false prophets of old in the Old Testament, the false prophets of old, they were they did the same thing. They taught the smooth things, the easy things, the things that people wanted to hear. Um, like Jeremiah 6 and verse 14. Jeremiah 6 and verse 14, Jeremiah said, They have healed also the hurt of, my, of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. And so I, I'm just, you know, that's really where we are. So you say, well, James, these are these are the people that you have to be wary of. That's right. That's right. Paul said, uh, you know, don't be surprised. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing of his ministers, if his ministers be transformed as the, as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So here's what we're getting to. How do you recognize these false teachers then? James, you, you spent 15 minutes talking about you're going to be a fruit inspector. But you haven't talked about any kind of fruit. Well, that's exactly how you know about a false teacher. If you can't see through them on the outside, if they look pretty on the outside, sound good on the outside, then let's talk about their fruits. Now let's go back to Matthew chapter 7. <clears throat> In Matthew chapter 7, this, this is what Jesus said about the false prophets. Remember, he said, Enter you into straight gate, wide as a gate, broad as a way, lead to destruction, and many there be that go on there at. Enter you into straight gate. Well, how do people get into, onto the broad way? Well, beware of false prophets. They enter in, they look like sheep, but really they're ravening wolves. Well, how do you know the difference then? Verse 16, he says, Ye shall know them by their fruit, by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into a fire, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. All right, so by their fruits you'll know them. You're going to know them by their, by their fruits. Now, what we're talking about fruits then? Fruits, uh, you know, we understand that fruit is what grows on a tree. It's, it's the product of a, of a plant, a good plant. But in this case, Jesus is using it figuratively, and it's any, the, the works or the result or the acts, the deeds that people are doing. So the fruits of false teachers are what we have to inspect. We have to inspect what they produce. What do, what do they produce, and let's see if that's good fruit or bad fruit. 
and then you'll know if that's good, if that's a uh, false prophet or a false teacher. So let's look at their fruits. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to try to look at three three different fruits here. We'll kind of rush through this maybe. But if you want to call, I mean call in. Let's give the phone numbers again. Uh, area code three three six. The phone number is four two seven nine six nine six four two seven. WMYN or 627-9563-627 WLOE or you can call on my phone 276-340-2653 and uh, we'll we'll get you on there we have a discussion so how how do we know about false teachers because you know let's let's be honest a lot of people don't like to hear false teachers they don't like to hear people said or be called false teachers and you know friends it's not like you enjoy calling someone a false teacher, but at the same time, you have to call fruit what it is, right? You have to inspect the fruit. So let's talk about the fruit of doctrines for a minute. Uh, if you examine a doctrine that is taught, uh, that's one way to know if the teacher is false. That, that's part of its fruit. That's part of that teacher's fruit, okay? Now, listen, a doctrine, a good doctrine, uh, a healthy doctrine is is of the Lord. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean it is from God. Acts 13, verse 9, listen. The deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. So Paul was teaching, and here's the, the deputy uh, council, that, uh, pro-council that was, that was uh, being taught, and, and Sergius Paulus was trying to, or LMS, was trying to uh, dissuade him, turn him away from the truth. But when he saw it, when he saw what Paul did, said and uh, said and did, he was astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. In other words, this comes from God. This comes from God. Romans uh, 16, verse 17, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. So there's a certain doctrine that has to be taught, and it has to be from the Lord. Now how do you know if something's from the Lord or not? I mean, let's, let's do a little uh, fruit inspector. Let's examine the fruit of a doctrine. Uh, a doctrine has to be from God. Now, friends, if doctrine is not from God, the way you know that is you just go to the Bible. You go to the Bible and you find if this doctrine lines up with what the Bible says, then it's, then it's good fruit. And what is being taught or promoted is, is, is good fruit. This is a good, a good teacher. But you'll know a false teacher if what he's teaching is not in agreement with the Bible. Now listen to what John says. In 2 John, verse 9, don't, don't ask me what chapter, 2 John, verse 9, just one little short book here, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not unto your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. Now listen, if someone is teaching something that is not in the Bible, you don't say, well, you know, God bless you on your merry way. I don't know how many times... Uh, uh, you know, I've talked to people and they don't, they don't agree with what we're teaching. And yet they'll go, well, you know, have a good day and, and hope, you, I hope you have good luck, you know, talking to someone else. Well, why would you wish me good luck talking to someone else? Or why would you wish me well talking to someone else if you don't even believe that what I'm teaching is right? And so if I find, if I find a teacher or I'm examining the fruit of a, of a person and I realize that what they're teaching is not right, Guess what I'm going to do? I'm not going to say, "Boy, I hope they, I hope they have success." I'm not going to promote them. I'm not going to say that they're teaching something good because they're not. And uh, you know, last week we talked about uh, uh, Billy Graham. Some of the things that, that he said, friends, Billy Graham's fruit were bad fruit. I mean, when a man, the man's doctrine says you can get to heaven without even believing or knowing about Jesus. Well, hello, why are we even teaching? Why was Billy Graham even going around the world? And, um, and, and anybody who says, anybody who says that you don't have to believe, well, that's, that's, that's bad fruit. That's bad fruit. Now listen, so bad fruit is contrary to sound doctrine. Bad fruit is contrary to good doctrine. 
in 1 Timothy 1 verse 3, I besought thee to abide at Ephesus. Uh, I, bethought, I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables or endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Now this is what Paul tells Timothy. He says, charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Now, uh, if doctrine doesn't matter, why would, Paul say, why would Paul say don't teach any other doctrine? Well, it must be important. See, doctrine must be important for him to say, well, you charge some that they don't teach any other doctrine. So the doctrine that's not lining up with what he's taught, that's what, that's what you reject. That's what you say, that's bad fruit. That's bad fruit. And anybody that's teaching bad fruit needs to be rejected. Uh, 1 Timothy 1 verse 10. Same same chapter, same context. He says, For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Now, how do you know if some if, if there's good doctrine or not? You go to the Bible and you see if it's contrary to the glorious gospel that Paul, uh, that was committed to Paul's trust. That's, that's sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is in, in agreement with what Paul said. And that's why, friends, we're always stressing to you. Look, if what you believe, if what you believe is, is contrary to the Bible or you can't find the Bible, you need to leave it. You need to drop it. You know, drop it like a bad potato. You know, or drop it like a bad apple, you might say. Get rid of it. Why? It's, it's bad fruit. And so we're just in, in examining doctrines that, that uh, uh, fruits of, what, of, of false teachers. We're looking at their doctrines. So a fruit inspector must examine the fruit. I mean, we have to examine these doctrines and let's see if, if, uh, if it lines up with the scriptures. Acts 17 verse 11 and 12 uh, Paul says these, talking about the Bereans, were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which, are, uh, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. All right, so they searched the scriptures daily. They're, they're, they're inspecting that fruit. Let's open the Bible up and let's see if what you're teaching lines up with the Bible. If there's some part of the Bible that contradicts what you said, uh, it's not good fruit. You know, sometimes people say, well, well, that's right from the Bible. Well, it may be right from the Bible, but does it contradict something else in the Bible? If it contradicts something else in the Bible, then it's not good fruit. It's, it's bad fruit, all right? It just looks good. It, 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 can't, it can't contradict the Bible in another place. Now, Listen to Acts 17, verse 19. When, when Paul in, came into Athens, the Bible says they took him and brought him unto the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. So they wanted to know about the doctrine. Friends, when, uh, when you hear me talking about a doctrine that someone teaches or what people believe or religious group believes or teaches whatever, you should just think about it like, hey, well, James is just inspecting the fruit because what people teach is part of their fruit, all right? Part of their fruit. And so you have to make sure that what is being taught is, is, is according to the scriptures. And that's all we're doing. We're just examining the fruit. Doctrine, there's doctrines are, are teachings are part of their fruit, and we just have to examine that. Now, let me ask you this. Why would, why would someone be afraid of having their fruit inspected? Let me think about that. There's a lot of people that don't want their fruit inspected. A lot of people, that, they, don't, they don't want you to check it out. Don't, don't check it out. <clears throat> uh, going back to that, that uh, show, I was watching that border, uh, border Patrol where they're checking out people's luggage that are coming into to another country. People bring fruit all the time into, into places. 
and from other countries. And I don't know, I, I'm going to say that most countries do not allow fresh fruits to come into their country because they harbor insects or diseases that, you know, micros microscopic diseases that can just destroy, decimate uh, a nation's crops if they get, you know, uh, a foothold in. And so they basically make people throw away fruit. It may be good food. It may be, you might could eat it and everything be fine. But if it's carrying something that you don't see, uh, it needs to be destroyed. And so most of the time they don't take the chances. But they say, we're, we're going to test your fruit. We're going, we're going to test uh, what's coming in. Well, friends, why can't we examine fruit? Why can't we examine what people are teaching? And if someone doesn't want you to examine, if they don't want you to ask questions, ask your, ask your pastor, bishop, rabbi, whoever it may be. Ask them questions. Uh, about what you believe or what is being taught, unless if they give you a scripture. Uh, or, or better yet, if you want to do this, give me a call and tell me what you believe, where, what your denomination is, and I'll give you some questions to ask. And let's see what, what your preacher, bishop, or rabbi says. Let's just, let's just see what he has to say. Now, if someone doesn't want to be inspected, <clears throat> excuse me, if someone doesn't want to be expected, uh, could it be because they've got something to hide? Could it be because um, maybe their doctrine, maybe their doctrine's got some bugs in it? Maybe their doctrine's a little fruity. Maybe it's a little nutty. I don't know. Um, so I'm saying I don't know why people would not want to be inspected. And friends, you can inspect us. You know, you know when when. When I hear when I hear people say, "Well, judge not, you be not judged." You can judge me. You can inspect me. Sure, just ex examine. I'm, I'm asked about what we're saying. Inspect what's being said with the Bible. I mean, the Bible's the standard. So, if you want to uh, find out if what we're uh, saying is true, then all you have to do, friends, is call up on the phone. I mean, there's. There's nothing. Uh, there's nothing to be afraid of, if if uh, if your fruit's clean, right? I mean, if your fruit is bug free, just hey, inspect the way. I don't have anything to hide. Um, I don't know of any anybody else in the area that has a live call in. I don't know of anybody else that's saying, hey, exam, ask us questions. You know, come to our Bible studies, ask us questions. Uh, so. That's just what we're that's what we're doing. We're we're inspecting fruits now. So the fruit of doctrines has to be inspected. All right, you have to inspect the doctrines. But what about this? Here's another fruit, because this is this is some fruits that um, that we have to look at. What about the fruit of their deeds? Fruit of their deeds. Uh, you know, you can tell a lot about a false teacher by looking at what they do. Doctrine should be what they say. Um, their deeds, this is what they do. And a lot of people can talk a good talk, but are they, what are they doing? You know, In Matthew, 22, Matthew 23 and verse 14, listen to what Jesus says. He says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. They devour our widows' houses. Uh, you think about that. How does a person devour a widow's house? Have you ever stopped to think about what doctrines people put on people on other people? What doctrines that men put on other people in their teaching? Uh, the idea of, of, of tithing, insisting that someone have to give a certain amount when the Bible says you give as you prospered and as you purposed in your heart. Uh, but when you insist that a, certain, that a person pay a certain much, uh, that's devouring them. That word devour actually means to eat down. It means to consume it. Now, if you take away what someone has, but by insisting that they give a certain amount, isn't that devouring their houses? 
I mean, that's taking away everything they have. So this is their deeds. Now, you look at some of the local and national preachers, pastors, bishops, rabbis, and look at the, the opulence, the indulgence, the, the wealth that they are acquiring and under the guise of being a preacher. Uh, I mean, you know, just name some, of the, name some of the big guys. Creflo Dollar, Joel Osteen, Benny Hinn, uh, they're, you know, uh, Pat Robertson. They're all, they're all making a dollar off of the people that are on these fixed incomes. They're taking advantage of them, you know. Send your, send your money in for a, for a love offering. Send your money in for a prayer cloth. Send your money in for some oil. Send your money in for, send your money in for, you know, get a blessing, sow a seed, you know, and so and that you know it's it's all the get rich quick scheme, really what it is. Oh, I gave a hundred dollars and it came back a thousand. So send your send your money to me. Well, how about you send your money to me? Why don't you sow? Why don't you sow? Cast your bread upon my water. Well, because it doesn't work that way, see. There's not going to be any fruit coming back to you, so they they don't want they don't want to give you their money. They don't want to give away their money. They want you to give it to them, and your money will come from somewhere else. And so this is what their deeds are. I mean, what they what they do. Second Peter uh, two and verse uh, verse one. Peter said, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Make merchandise of you. Now, friends, what, what what kind of tree would that be? What kind of plant? What kind of plant would produce uh, a fruit of covetousness or making merchandise of people? I, I just I just can't imagine uh, selling anything that that I'm offering you. Uh, if, if you want if you want copies of lessons, if you want information, you want reading material, you want books, whatever, if I've got it, I'm going to give it to you. I'm not going to sell it to you. Now, and if I don't have it, I'll tell you where you can get it, but I'm not going to try to make money off of it. You know, I'm not going to say, well, I can get it for you for $5, give me 10 and, you know, we'll call it even. No, I'm, I'm going to say either you can get it for yourself or I'll get it and give it to you, but... I'm not gonna make merchandise of you. We we never, we never ask you to give money. In the Lord's Church, we're not asking people to give money to, to finance our uh, works. We're not asking you to finance anything that we do. So, so what kind of fruit, what kind of fruit is, is on the tree of say, like Benny Hinn when he when he tells everybody to send money, millions and millions of dollars for a healing center when he himself goes around the world trying to heal people. Supposedly he does heal them. And and then says, well, God told me to wait on the healing center. I don't, I don't think it was ever built. But he sure got a lot of money off of it. Now, what, what kind of fruit is that? What kind of fruit takes advantage of people uh, who are in who are sick or or ailing you know who are suffering and says well give me money send me money and and we'll pray for you or anoint you or whatever what what kind of fruit what kind of tree produces the fruit of begging people for money first Timothy 6 and verse 10 Paul said the love of money is the root of all evil which, while some have coveted after, they have erred from the faith and have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So, 
Listen, when the love of money is at the root, covetousness is the fruit. Do I need to say that again? When the love of money is at the root, covetousness is the, going to be the fruit. I mean, it, it's, it's going to be what is what is produced. Now, so when I hear these guys on TV or see these guys on TV and that's all they're talking about, give me money, give me money, give me money, I, I know what kind of planet it is. I, I know what kind of planet it is. That, that's their fruit. Their fruit is no good. Uh, Titus 1 verse 10, Paul said, There are many ruling and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. That's for, that's for money. Right? Teaching things they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Now, what kind of plant will produce that? And can we say, can we say that that fruit is, uh, can we say that fruit is, is, is bad? I, I, I think we can. I know we can. That's not, that's not being harsh. That's not being mean. That's just a fact. We can say what truth is. And we can say what error is and not be uh, wrong in doing it. We're, in, we're simply fruit inspecting. And now, friends, I'm trying to give you some scriptures that maybe you haven't heard before. That's what, that's what I'm saying, the USDA. You know, we're, we're unveiling scriptures that denominations are against. So if the fruit of a teacher is greed, and covetousness. And friends, let me tell you, that's exactly what this health and wealth ministry is. These, these, these folks that believe in health and wealth, um, name it, claim it. Uh, you know, basically they're, you know, you're, you give to our ministry and you'll get something back. That's, that's what that is. That's really a big Ponzi scheme. You know, it's a scam. If something came in the mail and said, send me money, and you'll get some money back, you'll go, man, that's, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm throwing trash. But your preacher says it, and boy, you start loading up a plate. All right, so that we're, we're inspecting the fruit here. So if the fruit of a teacher is a doctrine that says, hey, it's all about greed, all about covetousness, filthy lucre, making gain of people, devouring people's houses, well, can we say that that's fruit from a bad tree? I think we can. I think we can. All right, 336-427-9696, 427-WMYN, or 627-9563, 627-WLOE, or 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me. All right, so we're, we're examining fruit. So we looked at the fruit of doctrines. We looked at fruit of deeds. Fruit of deeds. Uh, now, here's another kind of fruit. You talk, well, well let's, let's talk about... Uh, the product of a teacher. Now, if a teacher is teaching something and then you look at his product, what's, what's, what's the final product? Then you can tell something about uh, his fruit. And I'm talking, we're talking about the fruit of disciples. So you've got the fruit of his doctrines and the fruit of his uh, uh, deeds. And now we're going to look at the fruit of his disciples. Uh, you know that saying, an apple doesn't fall far from the tree. An apple doesn't fall far from the tree. What does that mean? That means that the fruit is like the tree. Friends, if the fruit is like the tree, and we know it is, right, because everything produces after its own kind. Genesis uh, 1, uh, 11 and 12, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding uh, seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit of this kind, whose seed is in of itself upon upon the earth, and it was so, and the earth brought forth grass and the herb yielding seed after his kind, and the fruit uh, yielding uh, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God thought it was good. Everything begets or produces after its own kind. Well, that's what a teacher does. And so you just look at the disciples. Look at the disciples and see what they do. See what what, how they're acting, see how they're uh, uh, living. And that will tell you something about the teacher. That will tell you something about the tree that, they, that they're that they produced from. Now, so the fruit of a, of a teacher 
are going to produce followers based upon the doctrine that was taught. You see how that's connected together? They're all, they're all from the same tree. A man teaches the doctrine, and he's going to produce disciples who have following that doctrine. Now, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 1 and 2, he says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I have delivered them to you. All right? So, remember me in all things, keep the ordinances as I have delivered them to you. What I've told you, that's what you do. You be imitators of me or you follow me, even as I also am of Christ. So what's he saying? He says, be the fruit. Be the fruit. Be the fruit of my tree, basically. Be, be what I produced. Uh, 2 Timothy 2, 2. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. So we're, we're talking about being a followers or being uh, the product of Bible doctrine. Now, if I'm, if I'm looking at at a, a at a teacher, and I'm saying, well, let's see, is he is he a good tree? Is he is he producing good fruit? What kind of what kind of person is he? Well, let's look at his fruit. Let's look at the doctrine. Let's look at the at the deeds. Let's look at the at the disciples. Uh, what kind of tree would produce would produce fruit like uh, GodHatesFags dot com? You know, Westboro Baptist. Now, Fred is is dead. Uh, but what kind of what kind of tree would produce that? Now I know God is against homosexuality. I mean that, that that's not hard to figure out. Let's look at the Bible. But what kind of tree produces what kind of pro tree produces hatred in the name of religion? You you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's look at how people act. You know, I, I've wondered oftentimes, you know, what, what kind of what kind of tree is it that when you ask someone what they believe, excuse me, when you ask someone what they believe and they get mad and they get angry because you've asked them questions or you've, uh, you know, you, you just came in to, to ask them questions and they tell you, you know, leave, don't ever come back or something like, something like that. What, what kind of tree is that? I see the fruit. That's that's not the fruit that I would that I would expect to get off of, off the off the Christian tree, or a tree of uh, that's uh, produced from the doctrine of Christ. See, disciples are known, uh, or excuse me, the the Lord, the Master is known by the disciples. John fifteen eight, uh, Jesus said, "Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit; so shall ye be my disciples." So if you bear the fruit uh, of following Christ, you're going to show that you are the the disciples of Christ, that you are a follower of Christ, that you are a Christian. Now, there's some people that say, well, you know, we're, we're Christians. Most, most people claim to be Christians. Well, that doesn't mean that that the fruit on their tree is the same as, as, the, as the fruit on... Uh, a true tree that's produced from the Word of God. You, you have to look real close. Look at how their disciples live. You know, when I when I hear someone say they're a Christian and then they turn around and use foul language, or they're a Christian and they turn around and, you know, and then talk about going to the bar and getting drunk, that's, that's bad fruit right there. I, I know that they didn't come from, they didn't come from the gospel tree. They didn't come from uh, the tree that uh, that I'm getting my instructions from. They they're not products of the gospel. You know they're products of something else. They're not disciples or followers of Christ. They're they're something else. I'm following a man. John 15 verse 17. Jesus said, "These things I command you that ye love one another. And if the world hates you, ye know it hated me before it hated you. And if you were the world, the world wouldn't love his own." But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. 
If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. Now, if the world, if the world loves you, guess what? <laughs> that means you're not following Christ. You're not a follower of Christ if the world loves you. The world loves his own. Jesus said the world, if you are the world, the world will love his own. Well, all these people that the world loves, you know, oh, everybody's praising him. He, he just, he's such a great guy. Well, I mean, think about it. If, if a man is so well loved by so many throughout the world, is he, is he really a follower of Christ? He's not. He's not a disciple of Christ. He's not a follower of Christ because that's. I mean, it's, it's evident. Jesus said, "The world won't love you." John thirteen thirty five. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. One love one to another. Now, just because someone says, "Well, I help my neighbor out," I, you know, I don't, I don't drink, smoke, cuss, or chew, and I don't go with the girls that do. Well, that that doesn't mean that that you are a product of the gospel. Uh, now, the gospel had some kind of influence on you, but that doesn't mean you're a true Christian, not according to the scripture. But just look at the disciples. Look at the, at the fruit of the disciples. What are people doing? What are doctrine are they teaching? You say, well, they're good people. Look at what they're teaching. Well, are they teaching something that's contrary to the doctrine of Christ? They're teaching a doctrine somewhere that's contrary to the doctrine of Christ. They can't, they can't be, they can't then be good, uh, good fruit. I mean, it may look good, but that doesn't mean you should eat it. I mean, uh, you know, you see some, some of these little red holly berries. Boy, oh man, they look so pretty. Well, don't put them in your mouth. Don't eat them. Why? They're poisonous. It looks good, though. It looks good, though. Uh, when I was growing up, we had a china berry tree in our yard. It had little berries all over it all the time. Mom said, don't eat them. Don't eat them. Why not? Well, you're not supposed to eat them. Not good for you. Poisonous. I don't know if they're really poisonous or not. I don't know if she knew or not. Maybe they are. Or maybe they were. But the point is, uh, fruit might look good. But let me tell you, just because it looks good doesn't mean it is good. The other day I went to give me a bowl of cereal for supper. It's gonna give me just a little bowl of cereal. And I don't drink milk as it is, but uh, I pulled the lid off of this jug of milk and I said, I don't know if it smells really good or not. It looks good, it's nice and clean, you know, there's no mold or anything chunk of floating around in it. So I asked my wife, I said, is this milk bad? She goes, yeah, it smells a little, smells a little twangy or whatever she said. Well, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't believe her. I didn't think. Didn't take her word for it. So I poured a little bit in the cup. Man, that was a bad mistake. Woo! That was some nasty stuff. I mean, it took me. It took me a glass of water and a cup of apple juice to wash that stuff down. That was nasty. Well, it looked good. Well, that don't mean you should eat, drink it, right? And so that, that's that's the way we have to inspect. Fruit, we had to say, well, it looks good on the outside. Well, just because someone looks good and they're doing some good things here, right? This religious organization, they're, they're, all the good things they're doing. Yeah, but somewhere down the line, there's some poison there. Some of their, their doctrines are wrong. There's some of their doctrines are wrong, at least. See? So, you, you have to examine all the fruit. Jesus said, look, Jesus obeyed God. He said, he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, but I do always those things that please him. And then he said in John 4, verse 34, he said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me to finish his work. Now, let me ask you this. Can a person be a disciple or a follower of Christ if they have not obeyed him? Now, a lot of people say, I'm following Jesus. All right. Well, Jesus said, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I ask, or things which I say? Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Luke 6, verse 46. So I said, well, I, I, I'm a Christian. Well, have you been baptized for the remission of sins? No, you don't have to be baptized. Well, then how can you say you you uh, follow Jesus? See, I'm looking I'm looking at the disciple. I'm looking at the product. 
You cannot be a product of the gospel if you haven't obeyed the one who gave the gospel. And so this is what we're talking about. Let's look at the trees. Let's look at the fruits. Let's look and see what's being produced here. All right? Now, friends, I've got five minutes. You may want to call in. we just got a little bit of time left, but we've got time for a call if you want to call in. The phone number is 427-9696, 427-WMYN, or 627-9563, 627-WLOE, or 276-340-2653, 276-340-2653. So we're looking, at, we're looking at fruit inspectors. We're examining the trees. We're examining the... The, the fruit of their disciples. We're examining the fruit of the deeds that they do. We're examining the fruit of the, of the doctrines that are being taught. And all these things have to be taken into consideration to determine if something is really, you know, uh, really good or not. Now, let's, let's just look at this. I mean, what kind of tree? Remember, everything produces after its own kind. What kind of tree produces Methodists? I'm just, I'm just trying to be calm here. Let's everybody take a deep breath. What kind of tree produces Methodist? I mean, if I said, what kind of tree produces apples? You'd say an apple tree. I said, what kind of tree produces lemons? Oh, a lemon tree. What kind of tree produces Baptist? Well, well, you can't say that. Well, just asking. What kind of tree produces Lutherans? What kind of tree produces Catholics? What kind of tree produces Pentecostals? What kind of tree produces Apostolics? Jehovah's Witness, Latter-day Saints. What kind of tree produces Presbyterians? Everything produces after its own kind, right? So if that's the fruit, if the fruit that comes off these trees are these different denominations, then guess what? That's the kind of tree it is. And if the fruit is not from the Bible, then what kind of fruit is it? See, you can't find any of those kind of fruits in the Bible. So... What kind of fruit is it? Is it good fruit or bad fruit? Now, friends, I don't know about you, but I know what I do with rotten fruit. Rotten fruit, I throw it out. The deer might eat it. The squirrels might eat it. The raccoons might eat it. But I'm not going to eat it. And then Jesus said in Matthew 7, go back to our text, Matthew 7, verse 17, he said, even so every tree that bringeth forth good fruit uh, every, so every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And every tree which my which uh, every tree that bringeth not good fruit is hewn down and cast to the fire. So, if a tree is not producing good fruit, and it's producing things that are not even in the Bible, it has to be the tree of of man, not of the gospel. And that's the kind of tree that's going to be cut down, friends. Cast into the fire. Now you say, I, 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 now I'm not judging, friends. I'm just telling you. I'm not trying to be judgmental here, but I am going to be a fruit inspector, and I'm going to inspect the trees, and I'm going to inspect the fruit. If it's not in the Bible, I'm going to throw it out. Friends, I hope that you have benefited from this, where this is the, like I said, the USDA, we're un, unveiling scriptures that denominations are against but sometimes friends that's what we need to hear that's what we need to hear um, so thanks for listening this has been a word from the Lord my phone number is 276-340-2653 I think I've got about 30 seconds left maybe maybe 45 seconds a word from the Lord at gmail.com a word from the Lord at gmail.com uh, 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me 250 Boulevard is where we meet the Church of Christ meets 250 Boulevard in Eden North Carolina I'll be glad to visit with uh, glad for you to visit with us Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study, 10 a.m. for worship, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. And friends, if you have any questions, comments, uh, discussions you want to have, give me a call. Let me know. Lo love to hear from you. If we can help you in any way, we want to do that very thing. But the bottom line is, inspect your fruit by making sure that what you're getting is a word from the Lord. God bless. Have a good night.